Sveiki, mani maiznieki! Šodien es jums parādīšu, kā taisīt speķi pīrādziņas. Tā ir viena no manām mīļākajām uzkodām. Tā kā ejam uz virtu un skatāmies, kā tas notiek. I bet that was quite confusing. All I said was the same thing I always say. Just in my language, which is Latvian. Today, we're making Latvian pork dumplings. We call them speķa pīrāgi, which literally translates to fat pies. They are made with a soft and rich bread dough, filled with salted and smoked pork belly onions and black pepper. This is hands down one of my favorite snacks ever. And here's what we need to make them. Some white bread flour, yeast, salt, sugar, softened butter, and some milk. And we'll use an egg for glazing. And I'll show you a trick of how to get the most out of your egg glaze for a beautifully dark and intense finish. But I guess the filling is the most important part here. It only contains three ingredients, cured and smoked pork belly, onions, and black pepper. And you want to taste all of them at once. I'm not sure what to compare this to. It's kind of like pancetta. You want the pork to be nice and fatty, with at least 50% fat. And we're using fresh onions, not cooked onions. You want that intense flavor and plenty of black pepper. These three super savory ingredients work really well with a soft and sweet dough. Right, let's have a closer look at the pork. It is the one on the left that I'm using. As you can see, it's nice and fatty and it's dry. You can see that it's been hanging in a barn somewhere, smoking for ages. You should be able to find this in any good Eastern European shop. The pork should be salty and smoky and firm. But if you can't find it, here's an alternative. This is more of a deli style meat. It's still pork belly, still quite fatty, but it is not as intense. You can see that it comes from pretty much the same cut, but the deli one's like three times thicker. It's full of water, so the flavor is not going to be as strong. Actually, some smoked bacon could also work. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, temperature probe, and a brush. I'll start off by making the filling. Simply combine the pork, the onions, and the black pepper, and give it all a good mix. I like to leave this out at room temperature. When it is warm, the flavors get to mingle. Also, when it's warm, it's soft, so it's easier to handle come filling time. And of course, using cold filling could cool down the dough and slow down the final proof. And don't worry about keeping it at room temperature for a couple of hours. It's not going to go off. The meat is not raw. It's ready to eat. Okay, as ever, I'm using cold milk for this dough. Because I'm kneading it by hand, it's going to warm up a lot. My kitchen is super hot at the moment. It's middle of summer in London. Grab a large bowl, combine the milk, the yeast, the salt and the sugar. Give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve the salt and sugar and hydrate the yeast. Then add the butter and the flour and mix it to a dough. Normally, I would advise against adding such a large amount of butter at the beginning. But this dough has a very low hydration, it doesn't contain any eggs, it'll be easy to handle. And we don't need to worry about gluten much, we want this dough to be nice and loose. If I were to make a whole loaf out of this, then I would be adding the butter later on in the mix. But for little dumplings like this, this method works just fine. Now tip the dough out on the table and start kneading. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, then use the fingers of my left hand to fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. And this doesn't take very long. No more than four minutes will do it. Once the dough is nice and smooth and cohesive, we can start fermenting it. Pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit just about right for this. Mine is a little bit cooler, but my kitchen is extra hot, so it's fine. Cover your dough bowl and leave it to ferment for two hours or until it doubles in size. If your kitchen is cooler, it may take longer. If it's warmer, it may take less time. After bulk fermentation, we need to divide this dough. First weigh it and then divide it into 16 equal pieces. If you want your dumplings to be slightly larger, you can divide the dough into less pieces. But I would advise against it. They should be small. The filling has a very intense flavor and it's super salty. If you have too much of it, it would be overpowering. After dividing, shape your dough into little dough balls. Now this is definitely not the method used by most bakers in Latvia. Normally the dough would just be rolled out into a log and then cut into pieces, and then it would be shaped pretty much right away. I choose to use the same methods that I use for other breads, because they work and I get consistent results. Okay, after shaping your dough balls, cover them up, leave them to rest for 15 minutes. This will give the dough time to relax and make it easier to shape. And here's how to do it. Take a dough ball, place it with a smooth side down on the table, then flatten it out. You don't need to use any flour. Make it about 4 inches or 10 centimeters in diameter, Leave the middle slightly thicker than the edges. This will ensure that the dough has an even thickness all around. Now we can place the filling onto the dough. As I said, it's salty, smoky, oniony, it's quite intense, so you don't need a lot of it. 
A teaspoon and a half is more than enough. You wouldn't be able to fit much more than this in there anyway. Okay, now comes the trick part. Pick the dough up by the top. Then hold the filling down with your thumbs and fold the dough over to meet the other side. And then just press it all together so it doesn't come undone. Now gently roll the dumpling towards yourself. With this move, we are rounding everything off and sealing it up. Finally, just gently press the seam together. Make sure when you place the dumpling down, the seam is on the bottom. The final shape is up to you. You can leave it so it's nice and straight. Or you can push the belly forward and pull the tips to the back, creating a horn-shaped dumpling. Either one of these is valid. It's up to your preference. The shaping process can be a little bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it goes quite quick. This is how I saved time when I made these. Just make them all at once. It took no more than 8 minutes, I would say. And a little bit of effort is well worth it because the result is amazing. They do come in different flavors too. Sometimes they are filled with onions and cabbage. They could also be filled with a sweetened cottage cheese with raisins. Of course you can fill yours with whatever you like. But if you love pork, you better try them out the proper way. Place them on the tray with some nonstick paper, make sure there's a little bit of space between them, cover them up, leave them for the final proof, which will take around an hour and a half. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat the oven to 230 degrees Celsius, fan off. You want your dumplings to be visibly puffed up before you bake them. Now here's a little trick I like to use when glazing with egg. To get an extra rich and shiny finish, brush your bread once, then leave it to dry for 5 minutes, and then brush it again. This way you're doubling up the glaze, and it will have a more intense color, an even better shine, and the crust will have a nice chewy bite to it. That's how you get the most out of your egg. Right, let's pop these bad boys in the oven. They will only take around 12 minutes at this heat. That's exactly how you want to bake them, hot and fast. Similar with pizza, because the dough is nice and thin, if you bake it for a long time, it will dry out. Once your dumplings are beautifully golden brown, they're ready. As they are baking, some of the fat from the bacon will seep out. Which is good, because it fries the bottom of the dumpling. And I absolutely love that. It becomes nice and crispy that way. And there you have it. That's how you make Latvian pork dumplings. They're soft, they're crunchy, they're sweet, they're savory. Eat them on their own, or wash them down with a cold beer. It's all good. They are quite rich and filling. I mean, I could demolish about 15 of these, but for a normal person, 4 to 5 is more than enough. I really hope you try them out. Of course I'm biased, but this is the best snack ever, you know? And once you try it, you might just agree with me. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever tried something like this before? What's your favorite filling? And what do you think of my language? Let me know that in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.